The Summit League slate covers two months, but it's those three days in March that really make or break your season. How's everybody doing? I'm Jay Elson, and this is Coyote Corner. Well, the USD women finished 7-7 seven and seven in conference play this season and earned the four seed in Sioux Falls. That set up a potential tournament rematch with South Dakota State, though the Coyotes would first have to find a way to get past Western Illinois. The Coyotes and Leathernecks split the regular season series with the visitor winning both games and WIU looked just as comfortable in Sioux Falls as they did in Vermillion. Ashley Luke dumps it off to Tori Neiman for the easy two. The Leathernecks scored the game's first 11 points and they were just getting started. Michelle Maher turns defense into offense. She gets the steal and the score. Leathernecks up 17 with over 11 minutes to play in the half. No such thing as a 17 point play. So the Coyotes started chipping away and their senior helped get them started. Polly Harrington connects from downtown. That cut the deficit to 12. And they kept on coming. Bridget Orange looks inside to Margaret McLeod. She does the rest. McLeod scored 10 on the day. Yotes down just five at the half. They complete their comeback in the second. Kelly Stewart gives USD its second lead of the day with one of her four three-pointers. 73-71 Coyotes with just under 11 and a half to play. It was back and forth for the next several minutes before WIU put together another run. Ashley Luke was incredible. She dominated inside. Scores there to put the Leathernecks up three. Later, Luke again, this time with the putback plus the foul. The sophomore knocks 35 points, 12 rebounds, and Western's lead is five. They'd add a little more cushion moments later. Maher parts the red D and lays it in. She had 14, 93-85 Leathernecks. Coyotes still down seven with under two minutes to go. Nicole Seacamp with a deep two. She had a team high 26 points. Couple of trips later, the Leathernecks leave Harrington all alone on the arc and she makes them pay. Second three of the day brings the Coyotes within four. After a timeout and a defensive stop, the rally continues. It's Taya Hebiller this time. That three makes it a one point game, 94-93 Western Illinois. USD would force a turnover on the ensuing WIU possession, giving them one last chance in the final seconds. Amy Williams drew it up for Seacamp, but she couldn't find a shot. And that opened the door for Rachelle Contreras. Buries the three with 1.1 seconds remaining, and the Coyotes pull off a Summit League shocker. They outscore Western Illinois 11 0 over the final 141 to win it 96 94. Contreras scored 22 on the day, including three three pointers, but that last one literally saved the season. In that timeout, we were going to go with our, our first and second team all-conference players, you know, Polly and Nick off a of ball screen action, and I thought I felt really confident they could make a play, and Nicole did. I mean, she, uh, the defense collapsed on her. She made an unselfish play and, and kicked it to Rachelle. Rachelle makes big shots all the time when we work situations in practice, and, and she hit one, uh, hit one uh, a big one for us here today. You know, Nick was going to come off, and I knew if Nick would have shot it, I knew she would have made it, but... I could tell right from the start, they were trying to not even let her get the ball. And I knew, you know, when she came off the screen, I knew the whole team was going to collapse. So I just figured, let me get myself in a position where if they do collapse, she could see me and just do it up. I, honestly, when I saw them collapse and they, she passed it, the first thing I thought about was Polly. I was like, I can't let her senior year in. <laughs> The fifth seeded Coyote men hope to carry some of that excitement into their quarterfinal contest against Denver. And things got off to a pretty good start. Check out the ball movement. Trevor Gruce with a great look to Trey Norris for three. USD opened the game on a 7-2 run. Coyotes continued to shoot it well early with Brandon Voss. The junior hit his first three shots on the night, all of them threes. He had a team high 13 points. Denver, as the Yotes and the rest of the Summit League know, can shoot it well themselves. Brett Olson in particular, he hits his 11th prey in three games against USD. A couple possessions later, Nate Engesser gets in on the act. He connects from downtown as well, and the Pioneers open up a five-point advantage. 
USD trying to keep the pace. Cruz shows off some of that nifty footwork. Coyotes shot nearly 58% for the half, but still trailed by six at the break. They were down as many as nine early in the second, but Gruse and company kept on fighting. The senior follows up the Eric Robertson miss. He finished with 12 points on five of six shooting. Fellow big man Tyler Flack battled foul trouble for much of the night, but he comes through here, knocks down the turnaround to get USD back within five. But Olsen took over from there. Coyotes give him some space and he takes advantage of the miscue. That gave the Pioneers their first double-digit lead, and the shots just kept on falling. This one from way outside. Olsen led all scores with 20 points, and Denver goes on to win it 71-55, ending USD's season. Coyotes finish with a record of 12-18. and all right, well, the men were done. The women moved on to face arch rival and top seeded South Dakota State in Monday's semifinals. We'll look back at that highly anticipated battle with the Jackrabbits after this. And welcome back. Well, the road to the NCAA tournament would not only go through Sioux Falls for the USD women, but also South Dakota State. If the Coyotes were going to achieve their ultimate goal, they would have to figure out a way to beat the five-time defending tournament champs, something they hadn't done since 2012. They aimed to stop their five-game skid against the Jackrabbits in Monday's semifinals. The Jackrabbits came in 15-0 all-time in the Summit League tournament, but the Coyotes seemed unimpressed. USD wanted to control the glass in this one, and they executed their plan from the start. Polly Harrington gets things rolling with a putback. That was the first of six offensive rebounds for her. Harrington's post partner, Margaret McLeod, did plenty of window work as well. She cleans up the Lisa Loeffler miss, plus the foul. Yotes open the game in a 9-2 run. They weren't all second chances, though. Nicole Seacamp, nice look inside to Bridget Arn. She gets the easy two to extend the lead to eight. Next possession, it's Arns again, this time off a feed from Taya Hemiller. Three-point play makes it 29-18 in favor of the Coyotes. Aaron Johnston and the Jackrabbits just try to stay in it at this point. Gabby Bovers had some great games against USD, and she tries to play the spark again, cuts right through the paint and lays it in. She'd do it again just a short time later. Bover, the only player to convert more than one field goal for the Jacks in the first half. Kyle's try to exploit those struggles, and again, it's Arns. Didn't look like a freshman on this day, nine. First half points for her, USD up 12 at the break. And they continue to pile it on early in the second. Harrington backing it down and Clarissa Ober never had a chance. Harrington put up 18 points and nine rebounds. As good as they were inside, the Coyotes really struggled beyond the arc after 10 straight misses to start the game. Rachel Contreras finally knocks one down. That was it though. Yotes finished one for 13 on the day. Seacamp did most of her damage at the free throw line, but this jumper gives the Yotes their biggest lead of the day at 23 points. Now SDSU too good not to make a run, and the Jacks finally put something together with about 10 minutes to go. Megan Watashik hits for three of her team high 18 to get them started, and Bover finishes it off a few minutes later, explodes and scores to cap a 12-0 run, which brought SDSU within 11. But the Coyotes weren't about to let this one get away. Seacamp on the drive, covered a lot of real estate, but it counts. She led all scores with 19. She also had three assists, two of them to Bridget Arns, who matched her season high with 12 points off the bench. And the Coyotes put an end to South Dakota State's five-year reign as tournament champs, 72-58 the final. USD, which never trailed, dominated both in the paint and on the glass ensuring that there would be no repeat heartbreak at the hands of SDSU and moving one step closer to their ultimate goal. It's just another game and I just, just another game and <laughs> not really though, but I, I guess, you know, I have, I like, 
and just a lot of heart and with the team and I, I wanted to do it for Polly and it just feels great to knock off the number one team and I couldn't be more proud of our coaches and our team and our fans as well. So it was awesome. Before the game started, I just told um, the starters that we needed to leave everything out there. Like um, we didn't want to have any regrets after this game and I don't think we do. I think we gave it our all from start to finish and uh, the results showed it. You know, for the girls that are sitting in that locker room right now, this win means absolutely nothing if we don't uh, continue and take care of business tomorrow. But as far as for our program, you know, we've set it as our um, <clears throat> our goal. We want to be champions. You know, we're always striving to be at that championship level. And up to this point, South Dakota State has been that. And so they have the target on their back. We've wanted to knock them off just like everybody else has. And I think they've raised the bar. And and that continues to push us to continue to raise the bar as well. So for the second year in a row, the Coyotes stood one win away from the big dance. And this time, they got it. We'll have highlights and post-game reactions from Tuesday's championship contest coming up next. While they earned a little redemption with Monday's semifinal win over SDSU, the Coyote women still had to finish the job. And Denver, which split with USD during the regular season, was certainly going to make them earn it. The six-seeded Pioneers had saved their best for last as well, beating third-seeded Fort Wayne and second-seeded IUPUI to earn their spot in Tuesday's championship game. Winner take all on Tuesday afternoon. Coyotes looking for their first ever Division I bid to the NCAA tournament, while Denver hoping to return to the dance for the first time since 2001. And the Pioneers looked like they wanted it a little more early on, running the floor and running it well. Paige Bradley finds a wide open Jordan Johnston for three, and Denver is up seven. DU not done. Kaylee Edwards throws it in drive, lays it in for two of her 10 points. Pioneers hit six of their first eight shots and led 19-14 at that point. Polly Harrington wasn't comfortable with that, so she got her team going again. Great move inside on Bradley. And just like that, the Coyotes are back within one. But it wasn't just the usual suspects contributing for the Coyotes. Later on, Taylor Moore for three. Her first triple since January 23rd. Moore finished with five points in 11 minutes off the bench. USD continued to assert itself from there. Watch Ty Hebeler go to work. Four weaves through the D to complete her coast-to-coast -coast trip, and the students approved. Coyotes up one at the half. More good news to start the second. Harrington involved again, this time off a great look from Rachel Contreras. Harrington, six of eight on the day, 18 of 24 for the tournament, finished with 16 points. A few minutes later, it's that freshman again, Bridget Arns, picking up right where she left off on Monday. Two of her 10 points to put the Coyotes up five. Still some fight in the Pioneers though. They erase that deficit in a hurry. Bradley finds some room, buries the tray. She had a team I-14. Next possession, get a load of this. Desiree Hunter with one of the crazier shots you'll see off the top of the backboard and down, plus the foul. Free throw put the Pioneers up one. But not even that was gonna stop USD. Contreras came up large down the stretch. Sunday's hero gets the Yotes back in front with another huge three, 57-55. Contreras would strike again less than a minute later. Seacamp with a spectacular half-court pass to set her up for the and one. Contreras scored 10 of her 13 in the second half. Yotes by eight at that point and their killer instinct kicked in from there. USD goes on to win it by a count of 82 to 71 to clinch their first ever Summit League Tournament Championship. And along with it, they earn their first trip to the NCAA Tournament in the Division I era. That's right, folks. The Coyotes are dancing. It's a great feeling. I just know that every senior at this level wants to be playing right now. And I feel like for me to be playing right now, it's just a blessing. And I'm so happy. I'm so proud of my teammates, my coaches, all the fans. Everybody's just been wonderful, and it's just a wonderful experience right now. It doesn't really feel real right now. I don't think it's sunk in yet, but uh, yeah, I definitely feel a lot happier than last year. You know, that was kind of upsetting last year, and you know, we worked hard last year and got there and ended up losing by three points. So 
this is just such a better feeling. It's who prepares for the tournament and who's ready to step up and make big plays. And I think that there was a lot of girls that we had that did that this weekend um, on all different games. You know, the first game, Rachel hit a big shot, and that, that really carried us over to where we are today. And it just the momentum kept coming with us, so that was fun. You have to be a warrior. And we talked in the locker room about uh, before this game about how it's not easy to win championship games. It never is. But um, we thought that um, our kids were going to be tough. They've, they've showed that toughness all year as we battled some adversity and some highs and lows in this season. And uh, just really, really proud of the way we were able to finish it out. On top of their championship hardware, the Coyotes also pulled in some individual accolades. USD placed two players, Polly Harrington and Nicole Seacamp, on the all-tournament team. Harrington named tournament MVP after averaging almost 16 points and six rebounds over the three games. She also shot 75% from the floor and was perfect in three attempts beyond the arc. Congratulations to both Polly Harrington and Nicole Seacamp. All right, once that ticket was punched, the wait was on. The Coyotes finally found out where and when their NCAA tournament experience would begin on Monday night. We'll have more on that when we come back. And welcome back. Well, after securing arguably the biggest win in program history, the Coyotes were forced to practice some patience. While the field for the NCAA men's tournament was unveiled on Sunday, the women had to wait until Monday to find out where and when their dance would begin. A few hundred supporters joined the Coyotes for an NCAA selection show watch party at the Munster University Center on campus. And about 20 minutes in, everyone got the answers they were looking for. Here we go, Stanford getting a two seed. It is their region Saturday. They'll play uh, on ESPN2 at 6.30 Eastern against South Dakota. South Dakota team making their first NCAA appearance, second year of eligibility since moving up from Division II. And one thing's for certain, seeing that Coyote logo splashed on the screen brought out a lot of USD pride. You know, I was excited. My heart almost came out my chest just because I was so nervous the whole show. And just to finally see our name up there, um, it was exciting just because we worked so hard all season long just to get this far and to have our name seen up there across the country. It's, it's amazing. I just felt great, you know, even better that it's Stanford. Um, I just feel like all this couldn't have worked out any more better for us. And, you know, as soon as I saw it up there, I just turned to Polly and I was like, let's go, Polly. Like, you know, it's time and I'm just ready, honestly. I, We've been waiting for so long, like I'm just ready to go. Just the fact that, you know, we're here and after going 0-4 in the first in our first conference games and then now we're here having the ceremony and having this party to go to the NCAA tournament, I just couldn't be more happy and couldn't be more proud of my teammates. Like we've just worked so hard to get here. The Coyotes were also thrilled with where they ended up in the bracket. With Ames, Iowa just a little over three hours from Vermillion, the players are hoping to see a little more red in the stands. We feed off our crowd and we love our fans. You know, they give us so much support and uh, they give us a lot of energy. So I'm excited and I can't wait to see who all comes out there. The matchup again is this. USD will play perennial power Stanford in Ames on Saturday, March 22nd. Tip off is scheduled for 530 Central Time at the Hilton Coliseum. All right, we've got more to come in the Coyotes' first round matchup in the week leading up to it. Head coach Amy Williams joins us next. And welcome back to Kyle Corner, a very special edition of Kyle Corner and a very special sit-down interview with head coach Amy Williams. Finding out now, finally, who it's going to be. It's been a long week, I'm sure. It's been a little bit of a waiting game. It's been actually kind of fun to have a few practices where we can just kind of worry about us and getting better at some things that we needed to get better at. But um, I'm glad to finally know when, where, and who, and so we can start our preparation. The answers to those questions are you're a 15 seed. You're going to play Stanford, the two seed, uh, Saturday night, 530 in Ames, Iowa. So proximity-wise, uh, it's a pretty good fit for you. 
Yeah, I mean, we are really excited that it provides an opportunity for a lot of um, the fans in this area that if they can get away to, to be able to slide down in, in close proximity and catch that game uh, Saturday. So uh, that's that's pretty exciting for, for our players and their families and the fans um, to be able to do that. And, and obviously a very, very tough foe in Stanford, but um, just excited to, to have this opportunity. Now, this is a power program, and I know you haven't had a chance really because you just found out who it is, but uh, what do you know? What do you expect from this game with, without the advantage of tape at this point? Well, I think, you know, Stanford is, is obviously extremely experienced and they've played in, in a ton of tournament games. And, and so that's, uh, you know, uh, one advantage, you know, that experience and, and um, you know, going to be just a, a tough, tough foe that uh, we, we understand that. But um, just excited to have the opportunity to game plan for another um, uh, game and, and to have this opportunity to, to go and, and dance. How do you handle the situation as it is? Obviously a, a pretty heavy underdog against a program like this, but uh, how then does the experience of the Summit League tournament going in as a four seed maybe help you a little bit? Obviously the level of competition is, is going to be raised, but yeah. still you've played like you've had nothing to lose. Maybe that's an advantage for you. Yeah, I think, you know, that's the way we're going to approach this is what do we have to lose? You know, we've we've learned some things about, you know, to be successful in postseason, some things that you definitely have to have in place and, and you know, just go in and play with confidence like we have nothing to lose, play loose and, and um, you know, see what happens. Obviously, just for the girls, what a, what a reward for them for, for an incredible run in Sioux Falls. Yeah, I mean, I just couldn't be more proud of a group. I thought that they um, they just really were very determined up there in Sioux Falls and, and um, had had great um, uh, determination and, and just, uh, you know, showed, showed great effort in that tournament, and I'm proud to see them rewarded by cutting down nets. All right, well, good luck to you on Saturday. Again, the Coyotes will face Stanford in the 15-2 matchup in Ames, Iowa. Saturday night, 5.30 is the tip-off time. That's central time. And uh, we will, of course, be down there. We'll be back to wrap up uh, our coverage of the NCAA tournament uh, in a couple of weeks right here on the Coast Sports Network.